Hello, my name is Ash Agarwal, and I'm going to be talking about the great filter, something which I find really interesting, and I'm going to do my best to try and explain it to you. So, when scientists found water on Mars, they got excited, because where there's water, there may be life. Okay, first I'm going to ask a question. Raise your hand if you believe aliens exist. So, scientists are planning so many new missions to send, for example, rovers and maybe even humans to Mars to study the planet up close, to search for signs of life or what used to be life. So, they're planning something called a Mars sample mission. And what they're going to do then is send a rover to collect sand or dirt, which will be brought back to Earth for examination. For life, or maybe not. And what do I hope they find? Well, to be honest, I hope they find nothing. I hope that the sands and rocks of Mars are dead, lifeless as they always have been. But on the contrary, let's assume that there is that there was life. If they found something simple, like maybe a bacteria, that would be bad news. If they found something a bit more complex, like a small mammal, such as something like a dog, that would be very bad news. The more complex the life, the worse omen it is for future of humankind. So the search for extraterrestrial intelligent species, or basically we're looking for aliens, SETI, has been going on for 60 years and counting, yet the results have all come to one point. There are many ways to put this, a few being zero, zilch, nada, nothing. We found nothing. So there are billions and billions of planets, so many possibilities for life, yet we found none other than Earth, obviously. So right now it may seem like I'm going to throw things at you, but eventually everything will fit together and make sense. So let's imagine life, no, sorry, the evolution of life as a staircase from its inception, aka the beginning, to us today or where we hope to be. So the next, first we have single cellular organisms, something simple like bacteria or algae. Then these single cellular organisms would combine and there would be unlimited possibilities. Multicellular organisms, that could be anything from your favorite animal to your least favorite animal, to even a bird or anything in between. And so the next step would be for this multicellular species to evolve a big brain what we did. That's why we're smart. That's why I'm talking to you here. Because we, evolved, we evolved a big brain as compared to other species. And so right now I'm going to jump, but then I'm going to come back. And it may not make sense at first, but eventually it will. So life as we know it, we'll try to reach out, cover every inch of space available. And since planets have a limited space and lifespan, it's only certain that then a species would move on after colonizing its planet to maybe its star. And this links directly to something called the Kardashev scale, which I won't go into much, but what it does is it rates a planet based on its power. A type one being it has power and control over the entire planet. Type two, solar system, three galaxy, etc. We're at 0.73-ish on the scale, so in a few centuries we may become type one. And in a few millennium, type two. So there are so many planets like Earth, which have had a possibility for life. Most, some of which have been around for billions of years longer than Earth. So then, where are all the aliens? This is because of something called the Great Filter. The Great Filter, put simply, is a process or a danger so hard to overcome that nearly every species encountering it gets obliterated, gone. There are two possibilities. One means we're incredibly special and lucky. The other one means we're doomed and practically already dead. This depends on where the filter is on our staircase, ahead or behind us. So let's be optimistic. Consider this, the time scale is humongous. It could be anything ranging from the formation of our sun to anything very recent, such as maybe the Cold War, we had nuclear weapons pointed at each other, but we didn't fire. What would have happened if, if we did? So, what if the wrong humans evolved big brains, not us? 
We are Homo sapiens sapiens as shown on the board. And what if something like the Homo erectus or Homo habilis survived? It could have proved a completely different situation for life on Earth. So this one is hard to understand, but I'll do my best to try and explain it to you. Brains are a big and long-term evolutionary investment. What this means is, when we evolved big brains, how did they help us so much in the caveman times that we've survived? Because brains, well, they don't help with a fist fight with a bear. They don't, and they cost enormous amounts of energy. So then, how did it only take 200,000 years for us to get from sharp sticks to civilization? So, this one is democracy. What it is, is what if we never discovered the government we have today? What if we were still living under a monarchy? So, some of you must have heard about Emperor Nero, an emperor of Rome who sat in his castle, twiddling his thumbs while all of Rome burned. Well, what if that happened in a modern day situation? That could have proved a completely different scenario. So, this one goes back to our single cellular organisms on our staircase. So what happened was two simple cells, prokaryotes, they, so one swallowed another, but instead of devouring it, taking the tiny energy, what it, the two cells did was they formed a union. One would provide shelter and interact with the resources outside, whereas the other one would use the available energy much more efficiently. But then there's always the pessimistic side. What if we aren't so special? So Every civilization must encounter this, otherwise it's not a great filter. It can't be something like a humongous lava spill at the bottom of the earth. Well, humans aren't exactly going down, we're going up. So, something like this could be technology. Such an easy thing to discover, such an easy thing to manipulate. So, that means any type of bad experiment, such as something to clean the atmosphere, sets the atmosphere on fire instead. Um, this is a rather depressing hypothesis, but what it is, is while humans compete with each other, while we try to gather more resources, to cut more trees, we don't give enough back to the earth for it to sustain itself. Put simply, this is, we're taking so much from the earth, yet we're not giving enough back, so you won't survive. Some people think AI is a possibility, but I honestly don't, because AI is smart enough to kill every human, well, that must have a species like intelligence. So making the species the great filter destroys the whole logic, it completely annihilates everything. Then there are filters where it doesn't matter, past the future, such as a humongous natural disaster. So what? What does this have to do with my first point, finding life on Mars? Well, look at it like this. If we found single cellular organisms, that means twice, in our own backyard, Earth and Mars, Life has developed independent from each other, which means it must have happened so many times in the galaxy, meaning that the great filter is ahead of that point. So if it was multicellular, same thing, which would make the possibilities so less. So, thank you.